This example is a two-part problem. This is a longer problem that we, that we have to solve in two parts. So let's set it up first. Raul the hamster is on his rocket car. And Raul is this little hamster that showed up uh, in um, the first year I taught calculus class. He didn't actually show up in the classroom. He just showed up in some of the problems, like he's showing up here. So he's got this little rocket car that um, his owner made from a toy train set. He took his little train car and um, took some rockets, some rocket engines from his model rocket, and the rocket engines were strapped back here, held on with some duct tape. And so the rocket engines would blast the exhaust back this way, forcing the car forward, and Raul would sit up here. And he has on a helmet. And he kind of holds on for dear life there while the rocket car accelerates. So the rocket engine basically exerts a force forward, making this thing move. Now let's read the problem. Raul and the sled together have a mass of 2.4 kilograms. That's our M. So let's write that down. M is 2.4 kilograms. And then we're told the rocket engine produces a force of 12 newtons. So let's write that down. F equals 12 newtons. Raul ignites the engine and the car starts to accelerate. Okay. Then we're asked, how fast is it moving after 5 seconds? When you see this how fast, that's the velocity. That's what we're looking for. And specifically, that's the final velocity. So I'll write down here, final velocity equals question mark. I don't know what it is. That's what I'm trying to find. But I, I do know the initial velocity. I'll write that down. Even though it's not stated in the problem, we can assume that he's starting from a dead stop. He's starting off motionless. So his initial velocity is zero. And then we're told how fast we're, we're told to find how fast he is moving after five seconds. So we also know the time. So let's write that in. We'll say t equals five seconds. And if you have a large problem like this, one that's fairly long and complicated, doing something like this is a very good idea. Just writing down all your given information. It's organized. It's easy to see. It's easier to pick the information out from from this list than it is from the written statement of the problem. And also writing it down helps you get it in your head, helps you organize the, uh, the particular pieces of the problem in your head. Now how in the world are we going to find time from this? We don't have an equation mathematically that will give us time based on this information. But here's our approach. You need to look at this information, all the stuff that you know right here, and ask yourself, from what I'm given, what can I find? And you notice here that you're given M and F, so we know we can find A. Even though A isn't what we're asked to find, we know we can find that. Let's find that now, and then we'll, it turns out that knowing A will help us to find the time. So let's, let's find the acceleration first. A will be F over M, and let's put in the numbers. 12 newtons divided by 2.4 kilograms. 12 divided by 2.4 is 5. The acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. Now we had this equation earlier when we talked about acceleration. Acceleration is your change in velocity, which is always the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Acceleration is the change in velocity divided by the time. Now the initial velocity remember we said is just zero. So I'm going to take this initial velocity over here and this is a standard mathematical notation. I'm just going to draw an arrow through it and put a zero there and that tells me that this value whatever the number is for initial velocity is just going to be zero. So we can think of that as zero and, and you understand that the final velocity minus zero well subtracting zero does nothing. We can just ignore a minus zero and we can rewrite we can now rewrite this equation like this a is equal to the final velocity 
divided by the time. We don't have to put the minus zero because the minus zero has no effect mathematically. A is the final velocity divided by the time. Now let's do a little bit of algebra here. I want to find the final velocity. Right now the final velocity is divided by t. I need to get rid of that divided by t. I'm going to do that by multiplying by t. And if I multiply by t on the right side of the equation, I have to multiply by t on the left side. And again, the reasoning is this. The mathematical reasoning here is if this left side is equal to this right side, then logically it follows that the left side times t will equal the right side times t. So I can put that multiply by t as long as I do exactly the same thing on both sides. And that's a fundamental principle of algebra. Now on the right, once again, remember this t, you can think of it as t over 1, so that t is really in the numerator, and it cancels out with that t. And that leaves us with this equation. t times a is equal to the final velocity. And the final velocity is what I'm looking for, and I can find that just by multiplying t times a. And that will be my answer. The final velocity will be the time, that's 5 seconds, multiplied by the acceleration, which we found earlier. The acceleration was 5 meters per second squared. Now watch this. 5 times 5, you obviously know, is 25. But watch the units. This is instructive. This second right here, again, think of that as being in the numerator. It's really a second over 1. So that second is in the numerator. And this second squared down here, that's in the denominator. So this, this second squared is a second times a second. And this second in the numerator will cancel out one of those in the denominator. So I'll cross this one out and I'll cross out one of these two just by crossing out the squared. So now instead of an s squared, it's just an s. One of those two seconds is gone. It canceled out with that one. And notice what's left. I have meters up top and seconds on the bottom. So the unit that goes onto my answer here is meters per second. Mathematically, that's what this works out to, meters per second. And meters per second, of course, is a unit for velocity. And if you do all your work carefully, not only the numbers but also the units will work out correctly and reasonably every time. So just to recap that, that's a little bit more difficult problem because it has to be done in two steps. We were told to find the time and here was our approach. We started by writing down all of our given information and even though we couldn't find the time right away, we could find something and specifically using mass and force we could find the acceleration. And once we knew the acceleration we could put that in to this equation which contains t in it, do a little bit of math and we're able to find the final velocity. Now one other, one other, one other bit of advice here when you're looking at a big problem like this don't be intimidated, don't be scared by it, even if you don't know how to, how to solve it, even if you don't have any idea about how to solve it. You can always do this. You can always write down your given information. And then you can always ask yourself, from that given information, is there anything I can find? And in this case, you can see that given m and f, you can find a. And often, if you can find something, then that something will be a step along the way to finding your answer. So you can always get started on any problem, even if you don't have any idea what to do. You can write down your given information and then try to find something from it. And if you do that, in many, many cases, you'll, you'll find one thing and then the next step will become more apparent. So don't be scared by large problems.